Hello, this is Mark from My Keys to Music. Thanks for joining me on this video. I wanted to bring to your attention a brand new Nord Sample Editor 4.0 that has just been released here in 2021. Prior to this, we were using the version three of the Nord Sample Editor, and that particular version made huge leaps and strides in terms of making it easier for you to create samples and assign them to your Nord keyboard. This particular version adds a couple of new features which are also interesting and will save you some time and some headache. In particular, the ability to record directly into the sample editor, and we'll take a look at that here in a moment. But first, let's jump over to the Nord website and see where you can read about this particular version upgrade, where you can download it, and how you can get started. So first, you want to head over to nordkeyboards.com. Okay, and once you're there, you can read more about the Nord sample editor here. So I'm going to click on that link, and you'll note two important new features. Uh, the first one the most exciting to me, is built-in recording. So what that means is you'll be able to record directly into the Nord Sample Editor application. You won't have to go through the trials and the struggles of, let's say, working with recording in GarageBand or recording with a program called Audacity or any number of recording programs for your computer. You, will, you can skip that step altogether. You can go directly into the Nord Sample Editor software and record there. Now, I want to say a couple of caveats. If you're recording directly into the sample software, it assumes that your sound is finalized and that you have everything that you need about that sound ready to go to directly record into that. In some cases, you may not uh, be in that position. You may actually still need sound editing software like Audacity or GarageBand to mix, match, merge, EQ, and do all kinds of things to the sound prior to making a sample. So I think it doesn't completely avoid the sample making process step if you are the type of person to do more elaborate setup. Let me give you a quick example of what I mean. If you wanted to go into GarageBand and play two virtual instruments layered together, let's say a uh, string with a certain type of EQ strings and then a second set of strings, or maybe you want to, to do synth, brass, and strings combined and have that as a single sound, a really thick sound that you want to use as a sample. Of course, all of that pre-work, all that setup still has to be done in GarageBand. Uh, so none of that will really save you uh, any time because you're still having to do that. But let's give another example. Let's say you are recording uh, a steel drum, which I've done in the past, uh, any kind of acoustic instrument that you want to sample. You could, technically speaking, set up the mic, mic the steel drum, play the steel drum, and have that record directly into the Nord Sample Editor 4.0 without having to go through the laborious steps of setting up GarageBand and getting all that configured and then exporting that and then dragging the file. So it is a time-saving step depending on your situation and how sophisticated you are when you make your samples. And believe me, making samples is a whole discipline in and of itself. It's a whole nother skill set. In fact, um, I'm so passionate about making samples that I created a free course for you to take advantage of if you haven't already done so. Just visit mykeystomusic.com. The name of the course is Master the Nord Sample Editor. So anyway, check that out when you get a chance. There's absolutely no cost or obligation uh, whatsoever, but just go check it out, and it's the best way to learn the sample editor if you're the type of person who wants to learn it A to Z in an ad-free environment. All right, the next feature here is Consolidate All Files option, allowing you to bundle, in a sense, the different components of the sounds that you use in a sample. Let's say you're using multiple sounds it will organize that neat and clean in its own folder, sort of as a little mini package. If you've ever worked with samples before, you know that it doesn't take long to have all kinds of support files working together and it just becomes sort of a mess. So I always demonstrate to people you wanna create a folder and kind of keep all that neat and clean. So in a sense, this feature here does some of that for you automatically with just another option that you can select. But the rest of it is essentially the same. Those are the two features that are introduced with the Nord Sample Editor 4. So let's take a look at some of these features side by side and you'll get a first-hand glimpse into what's going on here. So here on the left side of the screen, I have the Nord Sample Editor 3. On the right side, I have the Nord Sample Editor 4. And we're gonna go back and forth here a few times to take a look at some things. So let's draw in a basic sample. I've got a steel drum sample, .wave. 
So it's a WAV file. I'm just going to drag that into the Nord sample editor. Note that I have this particular file here in a folder called Steel Pan, and that folder is simply on my computer desktop. Nothing fancy at the moment. Now I'm going to save this by clicking Save, and it's going to give me the opportunity to name the project. That's why it puts this extension here, this project extension. I'm going to put that into the same folder as the Steel Pan. Okay, no problem. All right. And that's the only option I get under Save As. It's the simple option of Save. So now on the Nord Sample Editor 4, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Just like in the previous example, I have a steel pan folder with a steel pan sample, a WAV file that I'll drag into the sample editor. So, but look over here. I click Save this time, and I'll do the exact same thing. Put it on the desktop, call it steel pan. So let's do that and save. Let's go check out the folder, and I have three files, SteelPan, which is the sample file, SteelPan project file, and the original SteelPan WAV file. All right, let's compare that to sample version 3, same three files. So far, no differences, but this new feature here called Consolidate Project is something I want to bring to your attention. So let's open that folder again and just take a quick look at what happens when I do that. So I will consolidate the project. And you'll see here a media folder gets created, and within that media folder, it copies the steel pan WAV file into that folder. Technically speaking now, I can delete or move or archive or just ignore and discard the original sample because it has copied it and put it in the media folder for, in a sense, safekeeping slash organization. Because what typically happens is that you may be working with multiple WAV files and assigning them to multiple keys on your keyboard. You may have a whole smorgasbord going on. So with that in mind, you want to keep all of that extra stuff in a media folder. So this consolidate option is enabling you to do that. Now, when I go back here to save, notice how consolidate project is grayed out. That's because it already senses that there's a media folder and it already knows that the assigned sample over here is neatly tucked away inside that media folder. That's why it's grayed out because there's no work for it to do. All right, so that's feature number one that I want to talk about here for Nord Sample Editor 4. The next feature here is the big one. You'll note a record button here on the version 4, absent on the Editor 3. So I have also an option next to that, this threshold, which will then identify the incoming sound here and present this graphic for the threshold. You'll also see that you can adjust the threshold here, basically saying if it hears something louder than where this line is, it will consider it a sample recording and process. If the audio goes below that line or the volume goes below that line, it will consider that that is the end of the sample. So this can predetermine, in a sense, how sensitive or where you want it to listen. All right, so that's this. I'm going to put it pretty low here, but let's go ahead Ignoring everything here, let's just click record. This is a test of a sample. This is a test of another sample. So it found two samples here because I put a pause in between, and this is my voice that we're sampling here, which is not necessarily a great example. Typically what you want is a keyboard tone or a musical instrument tone where not only will it sample it properly, it will assign it to the correct key, in fact. So it's pretty smart in that way. So this is a nice feature. It saves you from having to record it in something else and then drag a WAV file in. But like I mentioned earlier in the video, there might be times where you need to pre-bake or prepare a bunch of sounds, uh, whether it be that you want to EQ them or that you want to rehearse them or that you need to morph them in some way. Uh, there's probably always going to be a need for some pre-preparation. But if you have something simple like an acoustic instrument or something that you just want to quickly sample, you can click the button here. Now you might ask yourself, well, wait a minute. What if you did have it in GarageBand and you did prepare something and you had GarageBand play back a sample of, let's say, three or four VSTs, you know, virtual instruments combined? Would this be smart enough to pick it up? So you'll note here under the configuration option, the ability to input audio device. In other words, you can select what audio device it's going to be listening on. So if I had an audio interface and I had GarageBand pumping the music into the audio interface, technically speaking, 
the Nord sample editor here would hear that and I could actually directly record from a piece of software, not necessarily, again, having to drag in a WAV file. So nice features, nice options, definitely saves a step of pre-processing or file management and movement like that. Another feature here is a folder where once I make a sample, you can click on that folder and it will identify where that sample is located and highlight it in the construct. Now, the reason this is bringing me to a temporary folder is because I actually haven't saved this project yet again. So let me save this project again. Um, make note of one thing here. This is where it gets really interesting. Look at the media folder. It has my original steel pan, but what about the samples that I just recorded? Well, let's save this now. And you'll see that that new sample recording is also a WAV file, neatly tucked inside the media folder and date and time stamped. So it keeps track of all of that now, which is really nice. But before this, you had to sort of go into whatever program you're working with, drag the file out, drag it in here, and then kind of really pay attention to where you stored stuff. Because if you were to lose your original WAV files, this project becomes null and void. The project itself, this project file, it doesn't embed the WAV files. It's just essentially a settings file. These files have to be accompanying this project file or it won't work. Anyway, this all sounds a little confusing, but bottom line is this media folder is a nice step in the right direction for keeping organized. You'll also note under the configuration option, the ability to set a default working folder. When you saw me do the save earlier, I put it purposely to the desktop in a folder called steel pan, but had I not done that, it would default to this folder here in my documents, which again is another nice feature, especially if you're not paying attention, you're wondering where all this stuff is flying around to. It's all going to be going into this default folder if you don't specify something specifically. Some other features on the Nord Sample Editor 4 that are new, you'll see some updated icons like the fade in and fade out now have graphical representations, making it a little easier to understand what that's doing. There's an icon here for unpitched, this feature, and these features also exist in the previous version, but the icons have been updated a bit. This feature here where it shows the root key is brand new. You'll notice that there's a number here assigned to my C4 key. This number represents the fact that two samples, two individual sound snippets, if you will, have been assigned to the same key. So it's trying to let you determine which one you want to prioritize. Whichever one is selected will be the one that actually is finally assigned to the key when you actually go and play it on your Nord keyboard. This root key option gives you the chance to split that up and bring it and assign it to another key. So for example, this particular C is an octave higher, technically speaking, but it identified it originally on C4. Technically, this needs to be on C5. So what I'll do is I'll use the root key option to take this higher sample and assign it to the correct key. So that's what those numbers represent. This is a management tool in a sense, because as you're recording multiple takes or multiple instruments, you may find that in fact, you play the same notes when you're making those recordings. So they have to go somewhere. It's going to be inclined to store it on the right note. Therefore, you can have multiple samples assigned to the same note, and then you can decide what actual sample will be the final result and assigned to that key on the keyboard. You'll notice also in the tools, an option to zoom in and zoom out with the command key, command plus and command minus. That's a nice new feature on the Nord Sample Editor 4, which we don't have on the Nord Sample Editor 3. However, both versions allow you to zoom in and out like this. I am actually scrolling my mouse wheel, or in my case, a magic mouse on the Mac, which has no wheel, but it's touch sensitive. But that's, that's really the way that I've been scrolling in and out, but it's nice and you like the command option, you can do command minus to zoom out like that or command plus to zoom back in. Okay, those are the main features. So there you have it, the difference between version three and four. Definitely worth the upgrade. After all, the price is free. So this is something you want to take advantage of and immediately download to your environment, especially if you're working with samples or interested in working with samples. Now, if you're one of those people that have been sitting on the sidelines looking at a distance to say, yeah, I know my Nord keyboard can do samples, but God, I just... I don't know if I want to go there. I understand what you're saying, and it can be kind of a tall order, especially if you're not a technical person, you don't feel like firing up the computer, connecting all that, and then wondering what are you going to sample and how's that all going to work? And oh, how many pieces of software do I have to deal with? Well, it's never been easier, but it is still a fairly sophisticated process depending on the kind of results you're going to be looking for. I make it akin to photography. 
You can simply bring out your phone, take a quick picture, and not worry about any of the mumbo jumbo. But to be a photographer and get the best photos, you're going to have to spend time either with editing software or with your camera and really understanding all those subtle differences. You're going to have to set up the lighting and all that. Well, the same is true for us musicians. We have to set up the sound and EQ the sound and get a good source on the recording and have good quality instruments. All that stuff goes into making great sound. So it's no different. And you can put as much or as little effort in as you want to. If you just want to have fun and make a sample of something funny or something quick, something easy, or just something to enhance your environment, that's easy to do. If you want something more elaborate, like the beginning of a song that merges with another part of a song, I show you some of that in the course as well. Anyway, join me at mykeystomusic.com. Again, the course is free. It's called Master the Nord Sample Editor, and I welcome you to definitely take advantage of that and participate where and in when you can. In the meantime, I have a lot of content planned. I've got some interesting and fun things coming up. I haven't been getting the content out as much as I want to, and it's not because I'm not spending the time. It's because it's taken me a long time to do some of the projects I'm working on, some really interesting things that I think you'll all enjoy. Thanks for joining me on this video, and we'll catch you on the next one.